Well, like a lot of these things, uh, they're sort of a big chunk of them are just moles or informants, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think Slightly. there's one story like there's a KKK and like nearly all of them were informants <laughs> or moles or something or other. So I believe it's the case that the Aryan nation in Idaho in the 80s or early 90s was, it was infiltrated all over the place. Yeah, so it is worth mentioning that the way these informants worked, it wasn't necessarily that they had, you know, they've got a, a you know, a federal guy and he infiltrates the group and, you know, befriends them all and makes them feel like he's one of them. What would normally happen is that there'd be a genuine, you know, associate of the group or someone who was attending the meetings and then the the state would find out about that and then blackmail them to become an informant because they said, if you don't become an informant for us, we'll get you on these charges. You know, mm. So if you want mm. to stay out of prison, you work for us now. So it's normally that they would turn someone, right. which is actually better for the, the federal government because, of course, they're not their guy for and through. But also, not only do they have sort of a degree of separation from these organisations, they... Um, also have more plausibility because these people were members mm. of the group. It just so happens that they were turned, you know, against their will a lot of the time. And um, it actually happened that an ATF informant tried to befriend uh, Randy Weaver at meetings and he repeatedly tried to get him to sell him two sawn off shotguns. Uh, he said that he was an arms dealer for a biker gang and, uh, I'm going to be the first to say that, um, yes, it, it's illegal to have a sawn off shotgun in the United States and it's a dumb law, you know, mm, mm, first of mm, all, mm. shall not be infringed is not, you know, up for debate. That, that much is entirely <laughs> obvious to me. They didn't say, oh yeah, by the way, uh, shall not be infringed, except if you saw off the barrel of your shotgun, yeah. um, then, you know, oh, that's, that's a bit over the line. No, it is pretty cut and dry in the constitution. And, uh, also, you can buy a legal shotgun and get a hacksaw. I'm not sure if I'm incriminating myself here, but you can get a hacksaw and saw it off pretty easily at home. It, it, if he sold him legal shotguns and then he, and a saw <laughs> simultaneously <laughs> and just said, here's how you do it, that would be legal. He wouldn't have committed a crime, I don't think at least. Well, that's, that's but because sure he went to the trouble of sawing it off for him. Yeah. Um, it, so they stitched him up oh it's, it's a proper stitch up yeah, yeah. yeah. so the, the the law that um, limits sawn off shotguns comes from the 1930s and it was to limit concealing weapons because at the time of course it was largely used by gangsters wasn't it yeah. to hold up like banks and things like that yeah and of course handguns exist mm -mm. Um, by 1980 I feel like the handgun was probably the concealed weapon of choice over mm -mm -mm. a sawn off shotgun. Mm. And so the law has become obsolete, but it's still on the books because the state is terrible and evil and uh, they want to prosecute people for the sake of it. No, um, I'm being a bit facetious here. Um, a few things I'll say. First of all, it seems like Americans say sawed off shotgun and mm -hmm. we say sawn off shotgun, don't we? Anyway, yes. that's a tiny point. Secondly, I don't know why you'd want a sawn off shotgun because they're out. Yeah, they're, they're not cool anymore. People want a yeah. bit of range these days. Don't they? So <laughs> I always do that joke. Whenever sawn off shotguns come up, I always do that line from Lockstock. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the whole idea is that um, if you have a, a shotgun, you saw off the, the stock, you saw off the barrel, you can basically put it under your coat or put it down your trousers or anything. So mm -hmm. it's um, a lot more of a, um, a, a, conceal a concealment thing. Right. Uh, um, <laughs> Knowing uh, the, how prone shotguns are to go off accidentally in some cases, mm. one would have to wonder whether putting it down your trousers is a good idea. Because mm. there's a story relatively recently, wasn't there, of a guy who accidentally shot off his own crotch with a shotgun. To, uh, accidentally. I think he's trying to impress a woman as well, which is, yeah, that's, that's how you do it, lads. Shoot off your crotch. There's um, a bit in the, uh, the film Chopper where Chopper's got a... a tiny little 410 shotgun down the back of his you could get you could get a shotgun down the back of your pants mm -hmm. and conceal it it's po that's possible to do because there's all types of shotguns right you could get a 10 bore big old double barrel 10 bore it's so uh, anyway <laughs> um they had a law where you the, the, the exact length of the barrel 
right? If it was, if it was shorter than a really specific, like down to the millimeter, if it's shorter than that, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You're in federal trouble. The feds could put you up on charges. Um, so I've got complete sympathy with we Randall Weaver and the Weaver family, but that is a law. That is a law. A and very it, dumb one. Uh, a dumb one? Is, yeah. No, well, it's a dumb law. But it was a law that he broke, mm -hmm. even though he was sort of goaded into it by an ATF agent. Mm -hmm. It's a complete stitch up. However, by the letter of the law, he'd broken a law. And I'm not saying it's fair. It's not mm -hmm. fair. It's absolutely not yeah. fair. But, but a, a law was broken, I'm afraid. It's like with the, um, with the Branch Davidians. It's like, yeah, my sympathy is in the first case, other than David Krish's uh, paedophile problems. Their, the stuff about all their guns, it was just nonsense. It was just, it's not fair. Mm. Like they had certain types of 50 caliber rifle, which were illegal and things. Um, yeah, it's not fair, but there was a law there and, and it, it had got broken. Um, the frustrating thing as well is that the barrel was only marginally shorter yeah, than the right. federal. Yeah. It was law right on allowed. the cusp, right? Or it was beyond yeah. the limit, but only very, very marginally. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's like a lot of things when the state, when the prosecute state prosecutors, the DA, I suppose it would be in America, when they decide they want to go by the letter of the law, then that's what they're going to do. Yeah. But this was their sort of casus belly to go after someone that was already on their radar. Right. They, they, they don't need a, a, a good justification, no, just right, any yeah. justification. You know, it's not like they're going to rat on themselves, are they? So one thing I've seen, a slight uh, digression, but on um, uh, Demolition Ranch, you ever seen that? So this guy, he had a shotgun where um, the stock or the handle had been completely sawn off or not. There was a handle. Mm -hmm. There was like no stock whatsoever. And the barrel had been sawn down so short that the shells came out of the end, poked out the end of the barrel by a couple of mil. <laughs> the actual red shell. that. You, so it was like, anyway, it's like the size of a pistol. In fact, it's probably shorter than... Uh, Mm -hmm. than like a, a 1911 or something. <laughs> a ridiculous weapon. <laughs> of course, only any good at point blank range, but would blow blow you up at point blank range. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, my point of saying that was that different states to this day have very, very, very different laws. Mm -hmm. Depends what state you're in. And I believe Idaho is, you know, pretty relaxed. You know, it's not as bad as California or something, obviously. Uh, but still, they had that sawn off shotgun law. And, well, unfortunately, because Randy Reeve was going to make a bit of money, a few hundred dollars or something. To sell I think it so, to because he was ATF hard up on dude. cash. And yeah, I, think, right. I think his inclination was, I'm not going to do this. But then he was struggling to make ends meet and just yeah. like, well, this is some money. You know, I may as well do it. Yeah. Because obviously he wasn't exactly earning much money in the mountains of Idaho. Mm. Yeah, right. But um, in July of 1989, uh, Randall Weaver invited the informant who he sold the guns to, to his home uh, in order to discuss fighting, and this is uh, his words, the Zionist organised government. And of course, this is in reference to the US government, obviously. Um, obviously. Um, that detail is new to me as well. Really? Yeah. Uh, is that an actual quote? Yes. Uh, well, okay. if the uh, words of the informant are to be believed, yeah. Uh, that That is worth bearing in mind, of course, that it could be that he wanted to distance himself from uh, the incident that went on to happen and perhaps could have made some stuff up. Who knows? Um, but it's always worthwhile when hearing about these accounts to keep in mind that any one of the people involved could be lying, which uh, some of them certainly were. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything yet, though. Thank you for watching that clip from my series Contemplations. If you want to sign up to the website for £5 a month, you can access that series, which comes out 1pm every Saturday. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.